The Canadian government is planning to announce its bid to legalize recreational marijuana as soon as July 1st of next year. Questions are raised on what this will mean for the future of impaired driving cases, both in civil and criminal courts across the country. Will the country see an increase of impaired driving cases? What are some predictions on future trends? I definitely think we'll see um, an increase in the amount of impaired driving charges laid by police officers. Um, however, I would note most claims arise from poor driving decisions made by humans. Um, they arise from aggressive driving. They arise particularly from distracted driving. Um, so with, with that in mind, I don't think there's going to be a, a marked increase in the amount of personal injury automobile claims that arise out of uh, accidents caused by high drivers. It is already uh, a criminal offense to drive uh, while impaired by drug or alcohol. You may see an escalation in the policing itself and enforcement. Uh, you may find that as officers um, come to uh, realize this is becoming a more common thing, assuming that's true, that people are smoking more drugs, then that may be one more thing that they're sensitive to when they're pulling people over. There are some predicted challenges that might arise regarding the impending legalization of marijuana and impaired driving, including court delays and the issue of how impairment will be measured. Impaired driving, even right now, is a very strong factor in the clogging of the courts. So if there is a, a greater prevalence of um, impaired driving by drug charges coming forward, there's no doubt that that's going to have an impact upon uh, delay because not only um, Will there perhaps be more charges coming forward, but the, the types of defenses that are raised in uh, DRE type cases, um, in drug recognition expert and impaired driving by drug cases, can be rather complicated. Right now at seven locations across the country, uh, the RCMP is voluntarily testing two different mechanisms to measure uh, marijuana impairment at the roadside. And the goal is to measure the effectiveness and reliability of these testing mechanisms. However, many scientists have expressed a concern whether or not it's possible to actually determine someone's THC impairment from a roadside saliva sample. Um, there's also uh, science that suggests that uh, marijuana has a longer half-life in the human body than alcohol. So someone who chronically uses marijuana or used marijuana earlier that day may test positive uh, in one of these roadside tests when they actually were not impaired at the time of the offense. The one um, issue that remains that's, that's still, I think, quite controversial and ripe for litigation is the reliability of drug recognition experts. There's a very recent Supreme Court of Canada uh, case uh, called Bingley. Uh, it was just released a, a month or two ago, I believe. And uh, essentially, that the Supreme Court of Canada held that this drug recognition expert evidence is statutorily permissible to be relied upon. My view is that's going to be a really big problem moving forward because uh, the scientific rigor that's typically applied to this type of scientific evidence really hasn't been met yet. And, and having done several of these cases ourselves, um, my view is that it is wildly unreliable. Overall, it's predicted that cases of marijuana impairment while driving will be treated similarly to how they're already treated in civil and criminal courts, and to other instances involving alcohol and prescription medication. For Law Times, I'm Alexia Kapralos.